Hello Math 133 students. I received a question about this problem which is 7.2.49 with, with a T after it meaning they expect you to use technology like a calculator or computer to help you. Alright, so I'm going to click on view an example and then the font on this is so tiny that I'm going to copy and paste all of this into a Word document which is what I did and there we have it. So the number of chocolate chips in a bag of chocolate chip cookies is approximately normally distributed whoop, with a mean of 1,264 chips and a standard deviation of 116 chips. So the first thing want, they want us to do is determine the 28th percentile for the number of chocolate chips in a bag. So a couple of things. Normally distributed means that it's normal. So I'll be able to use normal CDF and inverse norm and all those other beautiful things. And I drew a picture of this so you could see it. It's normally distributed, so it's got the normal curve. It's got a mean of 1, 2, 6, 4, so that's at the center line. So I'm just trying to make it so this is a little bit darker, so you can see it a little bit better. Um, black and maybe 5. There we go. So it's that nice normal curve. This area over here, which is red, is 0.28. There's the center line at 1264. And the computer program I'm using is actually already telling us the answer. The answer is 1196, but we're going to prove it because you wouldn't know that because you're not working with my fancy schmancy computer program here. This is called Minitab in case you're interested. Okay, so I've got this going on, so I'm going to put that kind of in the middle. All right, so I'm going to copy and paste this in. You, of course, have to draw it by hand if you're doing these problems. You want to try to draw a quick sketch um, because the quick sketch can help you figure out what you're supposed to be doing. So you draw your quick sketch, you shade it and label it and such. Don't worry about the 1196 because that's the part you wouldn't know, but you'd know the 0.28 and the 1264 in the center. That stuff you would know. All right, now let's go back to the decision matrix and think about this for a second. We want to find the percentile, which is down here in the bottom. So we're going to use inverse norm, left tail area, comma mu, comma sigma. So if I look at this, I want my x value is going to be inverse norm. The left tail area is 0 0.28, comma, 1264, comma, 116. Because those are my mean and my standard deviation. So let me grab the calculator real quick. And I already did this, sorry. The computer ate my video. So distribution number three, inverse norm, 0.28, there we go, 0.28, 1264, 116. And I'm going to say left and press paste and enter. Now old calculators, you don't have to worry about the left thing. It's there already. So newest, newest calculators need the left part. So let me change my view real quick to a different model so you can see the old model. There it is. So I would go second distribution, number three, and I would just say 0.28, oops, except I would type it correctly, 0.28, 1264, 116. There's no left, center, right option, so that's what I would press, and I would get the same answer, which is 1,196 chips which matches what the computer program Minitab gave us as well. So that's a good sign. And there's our answer. All right, now what about letter B? Determine the number of chips in a bag that make up the middle 96%. Hmm. All right, so let me go back to Minitab for a second. I'm going to fiddle with this just, just one second. There we have it. So we have the middle 96% is in here, in the center. So if you want to think of it this way, you've got 96%, which by the way is 0 0.96 right there in the center. Let me make that just a little bit bigger so you can see it. So there we go. So that's in here. That means that I have 4% left over for both of the tails. So I'd have 0.02 and 0.02, so 2% in each tail. Now the computer is telling us that the answers are 1026 and 1502, but we're going to prove it because, you know, we don't trust them, apparently. All right, so let me make this smaller so you can see it. 
Okay, so now I want to find those two numbers. So there's um, two values that make the middle 96%. And I have to find both of them. Well, Minitab already found both of them, but I'm going to prove them. So the one on the left, so X on the left, actually, let me do it this way. X on the left will be equal to inverse norm and then we have to put in the left tail area, so 0.02, comma, 1264, comma, 116, because that's the mu and the sigma. So let me grab the calculator, and I'll do that. So I go to inverse norm, I say 0. Point, whoop, not 0 negative, 0 0.02, and then the 1264 and 116 are the same, so I press paste, and I've got, so it's 102, um, 5.7 on the left, which they're rounding to, well, 7.7, 7, but they're rounding that to 1026, which makes sense. I, I mean, I don't know if they really want decimal places or not, so if they don't want decimal places, then you'd round to 1026. Actually, I'm just going to put that right there. Okay, so now what about the one on the right? Well, the one on the right is a little bit more complicated. So we have the one on the left, no problem. The one on the right, you have a couple options. So on the old school calculators, which is what I'm going to show you first because those are more difficult, you would need the, still need the left tail area. So you need the 0.02 that's red over there, but then you also need, here, let me move this over so you can see, now that 0.96, see it? So everything to the left of where I put this line, this side of this box. So that would be 0.96 plus 0.02 together, which makes 0.98. So that's what I would have to put in my calculator. So I go to inverse norm, and I would say 0.98. Or if you like, you can actually type 0 0.02 plus 0 0.96. It'll figure it out for you. And you can go to paste and press enter, and it'll tell you 1502, which is exactly what the computer told me from before. 1502.2, which is 1502. And there we have it. Okay, now the newer calculators, it's a little bit different. So let me switch, switch my view here. So let me go to the CE model. So if you don't have this calculator, you can kind of skip through this real quick, but um, you go to distribution, you pick inverse norm, you actually have the center option. So what you can do is you can tell it I've got 0.96 in the center, go down here, choose center, and then when you go to paste, press enter, and it'll actually give you both values, 1025.7 on the left, 1502.2 on the right. That, that new calculator is really nice because it makes things a little bit easier. So if, you, if you'd use that, then say that. So if you're going to put that into your calculator, you would say inverse norm uh, 0 0.96 comma 1264 comma 116 comma center. And that's what you would write to show that you did your work. And then just give me both the answers. All right, last but not least, the interquartile range. Okay, so the interquartile range is a little bit tricky. So let me draw you a picture of it real quick. All right, so the interquartile range is the distance between the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile. So let me just draw you a real quick picture of this. Okay, so you have 25% over here on the left in this region. You have 25% over here on the right on this region. And that means that you have 50% right here in the middle. So in other words, you have 75% to the left, center. you have 75% to the left of the right-hand value of 1342. Let me just put this in here real quick. So if you look at this vertical line right here at 1342, you have 50 in the middle in the white. That's 50%. That's what it looks like, as a matter of fact. And you have 
25% over here on the left and 25% over here on the right. 25 plus 50 plus 25 makes 100%. I know it seems crazy, but this white region, this is computer drawn. That literally is 50% of this curve. I know you might think the reds are bigger, um, but collectively the two red regions add up to the same amount as that white region. Fascinating, isn't it? Okay, so let's take this. We we can see that the computer is telling us that the interquartile range is between two numbers. Oh, let me insert a table just to give myself some space to type. Okay, so here's a picture drawn. But the IQR we learned in section um, 3 4, as a matter of fact, IQR is Q3 minus. Q1. So we would have to be able to find those quartiles in order to be able to answer this question. So we need to find Q1 and Q3. That's our first mission. But of course Q1 is the 25th percentile. But we just practiced that. We just learned how to find percentiles in letter A. So we would find that with inverse norm inverse norm, but this time 0 0.25, 1264, 116. That will get us the 25th percentile. All right, so if I grab the calculator and I type that in, it should be almost exactly what I typed in for letter A up above. Let me grab it. So clear. This is the old, or the new calculator. So inverse norm, 0 0.25. Leave all that alone and type left, paste. This would be what an old calculator would have, but without the left part. So 0 0.25, 1264, 116. You get 1186, roughly. See, just like the computer's showing us 1186, or 1185.7, but I bet you they want rounding. Okay, great. So now I've got to do it again for the 75th percentile. The 75th percentile would be Q3. So it's going to be the same thing, but 0.75. So I grab the calculator. So I go inverse norm. Oh, I'll just go back here. Inverse norm, 0 0.75. I'm just going to leave it as left and paste and press enter. Now with this new fancy schmancy calculator, I could have actually done it 0.25 on the right, 0 0.25, but said right because that's how much area is on the right. And I get 1342. As a matter of fact, with the new calculator, I even have the center option, because I could say I want 50% in the center, because that's what the IQR is. It's the width of your box, if you remember for your box plot. It's the middle 50%. So if I press Enter there, I get both of them, 1185 and 13242. So this would be 1342. If they want decimals, then you put 0.24 in there or something like that. But I think they want this rounded. All right, before I go any further, I'm going to double check how much rounding they want. One second. Yeah, I was right. They don't want any rounding at all. So we're good there. All right, then the IQR will be, I'll put it down here. The IQR, which is what they actually asked for, is the difference in those two. So it's 1342 take away 1186, which is, let me grab my calculator, 1342 take away 1186, enter, 156. And I don't know if you remember this, but it has the same units as your data set. So it would be chips chocolate chips, as a matter of fact. The best kind of chips, in my personal opinion. And there we have it. So you use the inverse norm to find the quartiles, right? Q1 and Q3. Oh, and real quick, use inverse norm to find the quartiles. Quartiles are right down here, inverse norm. So use inverse norm to find them. And then you use the difference in the two quartiles to, to um, or excuse me, the difference in subtraction to find the IQR. Now, if you're curious, if you want to see the old calculator real quick, the new calculator has a couple ways to find those inverse norms. 
you know, because you could use center or you could use right. Remember that if you're on a new calculator, you should be typing com or writing comma left or comma right for your work if you're doing like uh, paper pencil packets or worksheets or stuff like that. The old calculator, we only have the inverse norm option of left. It's just automatically left. So you'd have to say 0 0.75, right? There you go, 1, 2, 6, 4, 1, 16. Paste, enter, there you go, 1, 3, 4, 2. So that's how that works.